Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Brown. Welcome to my channel. This video is all about editing newborn photos. I'm going to share with you the different actions I use and a few different steps to create a nice consistent result. So the actions that I use predominantly are my beautiful skin and details set, my all-in-one action which has 17 fully adjustable layers, my sharpen and details action set, and my season to taste. The season to taste action set creates a beautiful finished look for my photos. All of these actions create a very quick result for me, but please remember when you are using actions that they aren't going to fix problems that you should have got right in camera. That's for a whole other tutorial. Um, so let's get started with this photo. Now, when I look at an image to start with, I assess the overall structure of the image. I look at the background to see if anything needs fixing. Sometimes we have those lovely little wrinkles and creases and lumps and bumps in our backdrop fabric. However, in this particular image, it looks pretty clean. There are a couple of little shadows that we will lift and so on. But usually at the beginning of your edit, that's when you need to make those changes to your backdrop. Now, if you are finding that you have to paint in backdrop because you're shooting with a wider focal length, now that will require additional time. So my advice is always use that longer, longer lens so that you don't have to paint in or copy areas of your background to fill those blank spots. Okay, so my desktop usually looks just like this when it comes to working in Photoshop. I've got my actions over here to my right, my layers palette open, and I'm continually looking at my histogram and my history palette as well. So the first thing now that I want to do that I've looked at my backdrop, my background is lighten some of these darker areas and have a look at whether or not I need to lighten parts of the baby's face or body to create those even results. The next thing I'm going to do is have a look at the red skin tones and then bump up some contrast as well. So my go-to would be my all-in-one action workflow. I do all of those adjustments first before doing any skin retouching, purely because when I am lifting some of those skin tones and reducing some of the red tones on a baby, they will make it a lot easier to get the best results later on when you are using the skin editing actions. So you're best to do any of those adjustments first. So to start with, let's play our all-in-one workflow action that is going to create those 17 fully adjustable layers. When we are working with actions, as I said, there is no one action that's going to fix your photos. Um, I have just pressed play and it does look pretty good though, right? Right, so let's not get carried away. Let's turn off our wash and have a look at whether or not we need to reduce some of the light in the image and darken down some of the areas. So what I can see here is that the hands are somewhat brighter than the face at the moment. So that's telling me that I need to remove some of the lighten layer. And let's have a look here. We turn that on and off. I'll just drag that palette over so you can see the names there. So by turning that on and off, I can see where I'm adding light. Now I don't want to over lighten my, my image and I need to take into consideration any of those bright highlights looking at my histogram that I could potentially overexpose. So what I'm going to do here, because I don't want to lighten the background, I want to create some separation between the baby and the background, I'm going to invert this layer mask. That means I'm going to take that lighten layer off my image. So using the shortcut keys command I, I have now inverted that mask from a white mask. It's now visibly a black mask, which means I need to paint that on. Using a lower opacity, I'm going to have a look here at painting it on to some of the darker red areas of the face. And seeing as though the hands are just that little bit brighter than the face, but we want the eye to go to the face of the baby, which is why we pose the baby towards our light source. So having a look at those highlights and shadows on the baby's face, we want to follow the path of light. 
adding just a little bit of light to some of these areas where it's a bit darker but still keeping shadows that are going to create that depth that we're looking for so we don't end up with a flat image. Alright, so bringing some detail here, all the baby's features there. So now if I hit the backslash key you can see where I've painted that layer on. Now if I turn it on and off you can see just by lifting those skin tones there in some of those redder areas and on the cheeks we are now starting to make that baby's face stand out and be a little bit brighter than the hands. All right, I don't need to lighten the back thigh down the back here or the bottom of the baby because we can see separation. If your image is uh, losing some of the separation between the baby and the background, you may need to paint that layer on to some of those darker areas to create a little bit more um, dimension throughout your image. So we've got a few other layers here that are not turned on and this is our correct the blues layer. So that means if I've got any blue skin tones, I can reduce those, correct the yellows, lighten the reds. So what I'm going to do with these layers here is now adjust the skin tone to make it nice and consistent between the hands, the face and the thigh in the background. Now before we start working with those yellows and blues, I'm going to start working with the red skin tones. So clicking here on my Lighten's Red action, it's at about 37%. I'm going to bring that down to about 30% for my brush and I'm just going to work here on some of these red tones around the face. And this is why I mentioned before about adjusting your skin tones first before using any skin softening actions or presets so that you can create even more consistent results. Doing this will also reduce a lot of the visibility of baby acne and things like that. And it can halve your skin editing time. So it's usually something that I do absolutely last. All right, now I'm focusing on just the areas that are red. I do not want to remove all of the reds throughout this image because that would make the skin tones look very flat and gray. We want to keep color. And this is what's going to help us create that nice peachy creamy skin tone. All right, now you can start to see as I remove those reds there in the hand and the face and we turn that layer off and we turn it back on, the results that we're getting here. Now if you find that the red skin tones in your image are still really needing a little bit more work, then coming down here to your Lighten Reds More layer and reducing your brush opacity even more down to about 10. This is a much stronger action and this works well around some of those darker reds that tend to have a few more magenta tones. So less is often best when it comes to using this particular layer. Now the reason that actions come with these fully adjustable layers is it's so that you can adjust them to every single image according to the baby and the different exposures that you capture and your lighting. All right, now just having a little look at this thigh back here, we'll come back to our previous layer. There we go. So we're starting to get the that result that we're looking for when it comes to editing the skin. So working around 
the image. I'm avoiding the cheek area because we want those cheeks to be nice and rosy. You'll find though when you do reduce a lot of red skin tones that the, the skin will become a little greyer and that's where we move on to the correct the blues layer. So over here in the hand to the left of the frame you can see that there are a little a few little blue tones popping through there. So I just sort of paint over those at about 30%, 25 to 30% to bring those tones up in warmth to match the face. Now obviously everyone is going to prefer a different result here. I personally like my images to be nice and warm. So often around the eyes when you are removing some of those red tones you can end up with some cooler tones just around the eyelids so you can warm those up with a smaller brush. Using the bracket key on your keyboard will increase and decrease the size of your brush. So using the bracket key on the right hand side increases and using the bracket key on the left will decrease that. So just coming around the mouth area there. All right, now if a baby has any form of jaundice, sometimes it can be quite patchy on the face and sometimes the shoulder and the body. The correct, the yellows layer works really well. So sometimes around the eye here, you can have some yellow tones. There's a couple of very faint ones up there around that hairline. Okay, so now that we've got those skin tones where we want them, this is where I can start to look at any of the other layers throughout the image that might need adjusting. So my light and shadows layer is sitting at roughly 50% opacity. So let's turn that off and turn that back on. Now I quite like what this is doing to the background. So I'm actually going to invert that layer mask. Clicking on the mask, I'm gonna Command I to take that off my image and then just have a little look around here as to whether or not I need to paint on some of that into the more shadowy areas of my image. But that layer does work well on some of those darker backdrops. So now I'm just painting that on just to that little bit of vignetting around the edge there. We don't want it to be too dominant. And then we have a vignette layer here that we can also, if we like the results of that, we can then just take it off some of those darker areas. So being a white mask, that means that layer has been applied and you can see as I turn that layer back on. And now with a black brush at a low opacity with a nice soft edge, so right click on your brush to make sure that the hardness is at 0%. The bigger the brush, the softer the edge as well, we can take that off some of those darker areas around the edge of our frame. We just don't want to create any distracting corners. Now I haven't cropped my image at all. I would usually do that at the very, very beginning when I'm editing my background, but I do like to keep as much information as possible. So depending on how my client would like their images printed, I'm leaving as much information as I possibly can to get the best results when it does come to cropping. All right, so when it comes to contrast, having a look at the contrast, whether or not you want to invert that layer mask and paint that on with a white brush just to the baby, that will help create even more separation again. And you can see, turning that on and off, We've got that beautiful dark background and when it comes to the color if you find that the color is a little too saturated you can again 
reduce some of that as well. But all of these layers are, as I said, fully adjustable so that you can customize them to your image. So down the bottom here, we do have a sharpen layer and I'm going to leave that off for the time being as the image is quite sharp as it is. And I'm going to use my other sharpen details action set there to kind of bring out some of the features in a moment. So when it comes to using my warm wash layers, I do leave this to last to turn it on as it will adjust my image. Now, if this is a look that I'm going for, um, then obviously I would work with these different layers. Just clicking on the little arrow next to my folder, I've got my warm layer and then I've got my wash layer. So with a green image like this, that's really nice and punchy with lots of separation between the baby and the background, it's not a particular layer that I want to use because I don't think that those red sort of hazy tones work well with this image. So that's why I'm going to use my new season to taste action set um, once I've finished editing the baby's skin. So now that I've used all of the actions within this particular um, sorry, all of the layers within this particular action, my all-in-one workflow, you can see it, it's got everything you need to edit a baby. So you could literally edit the skin now and save this and print it and it would be beautiful. But we're going to use a few different actions on top of this to really enhance the rest of the image. Um, let's go ahead and flatten that. You could save that as a layered PSD if you want to. Um, you can take snapshots in your history palette as well. So the more confident you become with the way that you edit your photos, the more consistent with the methods and the steps that you take, uh, then saving it and flattening is entirely up to you. So now that I've done that, I'm going to move on to my beautiful skin and details set. So this action set has soft baby skin, which is my absolute go-to. I do have the beautiful creamy skin there, which creates a really nice, consistent result throughout the baby's skin tones and is great um, if you are slightly underexposing your skin as well. But we don't want to do that. We want to get it right in camera. Blotchy skin is for when we have a few more inconsistencies in terms of the texture of the skin and just a little um, sort of undisclosed hint about this particular action that it works really well on fabric. That blotchy skin action um, I use quite a bit. Whitened teeth and, and so forth, soft pink cheeks. All right, so my soft baby skin, I'm going to paint that on at 100%. So you can see it says paint layer on at 100%, avoiding the hair, lines and edges. So at 100%, making sure that's a black layer mask, making sure that I have a white brush to paint that on. And again, I'm using a nice soft brush. What I love the most about using actions is that they really do allow you to customize each layer according to every image. Because every image is slightly different, whether you're using different lighting techniques, you're exposing differently, or the baby has a very different complexion or texture to its skin. When it comes to editing little hands and fingers, I do try to avoid uh, making the skin look too soft. I want to leave texture in the skin, which is why I designed and developed my own skin softening actions because I felt that we, I wasn't able to achieve that beautiful textured result while evening out the tone. I felt that the baby's skin just often looked plastic and fake and I wanted to create a really realistic look but give me a very polished finished look. So that's at 100%, let's turn that off, let's turn it back on again so you can see how different the results from that action have made the skin look. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to around 65%, anywhere between 60 and 70% is my go-to with this particular action. 
So you can still see the difference there. And when we're at 50%, when I zoom in to 100%, you can still see all that beautiful texture, all those gorgeous little milk spots um, in the baby's skin. Now in the background here where it is nice and soft, you don't need to play um, the action back there. It's not really going to affect the the leg because it's nice and blurry to start with and there's nothing there that's um, really standing out. So happy with that particular action at 65%, I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Now I still haven't gone in and removed any of the little spots or uh, flaky bits of skin or anything just yet because I do, as I said before, wait until I am completely finished editing my image. And we'll just take another snapshot of, of that. All right, so my new season to taste action set will create lots of different variations and they're all named according to the different colors and tones that they tend to enhance. So when it comes to an image like this, I've got to be quite careful that I don't um, play something that is going to look somewhat uh, disjointed. <laughs> I wouldn't put my pumpkin spice because it's going to have a very rich um, red tone with it. So I tend to go with more neutral tones for colors like this, which would be my star anise or my wild cumin. Uh, the crispy kale as well will often give you a really great result when it comes to green images. But very quickly, white salt tends to work very well with white backgrounds and giving it a really nice punchy look. Orange splice gives something, gives it a really nice orange glow and warms it up. Pinks obviously work with pinky colors. So let's go ahead and hit play on our crispy kale and we'll have a look at the different results that we're going to get here. So you can see it's giving me a really uh, different result when it comes to the colors. Now in the background, I've got a beautiful warm sort of glow coming across the baby. This could work better on more of a prop setup. So if I was to use a black brush here and take that layer off the skin, I'm leaving it on the little green outfit, but I'm just taking it off the baby's skin. Well, I, what I do when I'm using different actions like this and I'm not quite sure which result that I want to go for, I will paint each of the different variations on, bring it back to an opacity that I'm happy with, maybe even about 25% there, and I'll take a snapshot. I'll then reduce, sorry, remove those layers and start again. Now the key to creating a really consistent result when it comes to editing a client gallery, so multiple images, is using that same action that finishes off your images with different color tones, using that same action throughout all of your images that look the same. So if you're using the same colored background with the same outfit across multiple photos, then my advice is to use the same action when you are editing them together. So if your client wanted them to hang together on the wall, they would look great side by side. All right, so that has created a really beautiful muted look, quite like this. So I'm gonna click on that mask and just reduce that at about 50% this time, because I quite like the way that that looks on the skin. So these are designed to give your images a really different look. And you can choose which one you prefer. So that is a very nice kind of little glow there. So I've taken another snapshot of that. And then the next one I'm going to choose, which is one of my personal favorites, the star anise. And you can see it's given it a really nice punchy um, look. I'm going to invert that lighten layer because we don't want to lighten it. I am going to bring back my defined edges from 100% down to about 40%. And I'm going to use this mask here to take it off the skin.
You can see how much it's warmed up the baby. So just bringing that back to around 50%. Okay. So this is where I would take another snapshot and then have a look at the different results. So we have our first at Crispy Kale, we have our Wild Cumin, and we have our Star Anise. So depending on the result that you're going for, you can choose which action that you want to use to polish off the, the photo there to finish it. I'm going to bring the opacity of this star anise down to about 30% and I quite like that beautiful kind of warm look that it's created there. And again if you need to reduce any of the different layers within these actions they are fully adjustable. So I can flatten that and this is where I'm going to come in now and sharpen my image. I still have not re removed any of my little spots but this is where I will look at um, bringing out the details in the little lips and the eyes. So I've got my eyeliner, so I'm going to press play. So that says paint the eyeliner on with a soft brush at 100%. So I've got a white brush over here. Using the X key, you can flick back and forth between your black and white brush. So I'm painting that on at about 48%. You can see before and after. And I find that that just gives the eye line just that little bit of depth and helps when you are sharpening your image. So the eye pop. Um, what I'm going to do with the eye pop is actually not painted on to the eyes, but I'm going to use this on the lips. So using the lasso tool, I'm going to select the lips and then press play again as the instructions informed me. And you can see by turning that on and off the detail that that's brought out. Now what I can do is add a layer mask and invert that and paint that on at a lower opacity here as well. That way you are getting the result exactly the way that you want it. All right, so now that I'm ready to sharpen my image, I'm going to go with my sharpen and define, and I'm going to bring the opacity of this back to around 25%. So I find this just gives you a really good outline around the edges and makes those details nice and sharp as well. Now that I'm finished editing all of the colors, the background, we can have a look at our before and our after. And this is where I would create a copy layer, Command J, and come in and adjust any of those little spots using the patch tool or the spot healing brush, depending on which one is going to work best in each area. So the patch tool is usually my go-to. And you do have to be careful when you're using the patch tool uh, where you source, select your reference from. So dragging it to an area that has the same texture and the same light. When it comes to editing dry flaky skin, I tend to only remove what's very visible and distracting if it's sort of soft and it's there, it's not too bothersome. As you can see, there's a few little pits up in here and around the fingers, but we can't quite see them unless we zoom all the way in. So a quick tip when you are editing skin, uh, do not zoom in to 500%. You can see I'm zoomed in here at 200%, uh, which is where I can see a lot of the, the little spots and dots. But if I zoom in any more, it's a bit of overkill. So I wouldn't normally see those. That will just reduce your time. 
Alright, so when it comes to little areas like this, I'm not going to remove all of the milk spots, just these little bits of dry skin around the nose and the eyes. And then there's a slight hair right here. So following the, the texture and the tone of the skin to match. All right, so just down here on the hand, there were a few flaky bits of skin that are quite visible when zoomed out. So I'm just going to work my way around here with the patch tool to remove those, making sure that I don't impact any of the little creases and lines in the hand too much. I would say we are done. So making the baby look as realistic as possible, giving the skin tones that creaminess that we're always after, tidying up all of those little flaws at the end have really finished this off. So now when we have a look at our before and now after, we can see a huge difference just by using a few different actions. And when you get familiar with all of those different actions and what they do, you then speed up that process even more. But as I said, working with actions isn't a, a quick fix. It will help you speed up your workflow but it will not fix a lot of problems that we can often capture in camera. So it is always best to try and get the, the shots that we want as perfect as we possibly can when it comes to your exposure, your lighting, your camera angle, your composition, so that all you have to do in Photoshop is polish your images. And that's what it's all about. So I hope this helped in some way. These actions, as I said, are fully adjustable for every single image so that you can take full control over your editing to get the results that you want. So as I said, you can create a really quick, seamless editing workflow. It's not gonna take you as long as it did for me just now because I've explained every step and shown you what you can achieve with each of those different actions. So once you've created your own editing workflow, you should be able to get through it in no time. It normally takes me anywhere from three to five minutes for each image when I am using some of those favorite actions. So to recap the ones that I did use, we've got our all-in-one action that creates 17 fully adjustable actions. And we use the beautiful skin, we use the Sharpen and Details action set, and we also use the New Season to Taste action set. All of those, shameless little plug, are available at newbornposing.com. I hope they help. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if this video was helpful. And if you want to be notified when a new video is coming, hit that little bell. I'm sure it's down there somewhere uh, so that you don't miss it. Anyway, I'll see you next time.